I'd like to call to order the regular meeting on August 24th, 2020. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and an invocation. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Father, thank you for the mighty works you are bringing to our city in unison with promise that our city would overflow with prosperity. Lord, we declare our city belongs to you. Del deliver us from self-righteousness, apathy, fear, and unbelief in moving your spirit and power to intervene and stand against this onslaught of, our, of this pandemic. We pray for your special shield to protect our health workers, our police and fire, and those workers who daily serve our public. In your name, amen. 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 Everyone is present. Our city clerk will now give information about how to participate in tonight's meeting. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, city council meetings are closed to the public. Our residents have several ways to address the council. They may submit their questions and comments to public comments at GoodyearAZ.gov, and they can view the meeting using Facebook, also YouTube for after the fact, and then we also have a link on our agendas page using Granicus. The public may also contact the mayor and council at any time by sending an email to gycouncil at GoodyearAZ.gov. Thank you very much. Will the city clerk please read the consent agenda items one through 20 by title only, please. Number one, approval of minutes. Number two, adopt resolution number 2020-2043, authorizing the execution and recording of various easements and a special warranty deed, approval of a sewer line easement development agreement, the conveyances, and providing an effective date for the acceptance of the conveyances, providing direction regarding recordation of various documents, authorizing city manager to execute documents and take action and providing for an effective date. Number three, accept the dedication of special warranty deeds from JRC Goodyear LLC, a Delaware limited liability company and CP Goodyear LLC, a Delaware limited liability company for portions of Litchfield Road and Goodyear Parkway. Number four, accept the dedication of a non-exclusive drainage and access easement from NNP3 Estrella Mountain Ranch LLC required for the development of Estrella Parcel 12.23 Phase 1. Number five, approve the intergovernmental agreement with Albert Freya Union High School District number 216 for school resource officer services for Millennium High School. Number six, approve the intergovernmental agreement with Albert Freya Union High School District number 216 for school resource officer services for Desert Edge High School. Number seven, accept the Department of Justice grant to provide funding to states, local units of government and tribes to prevent, prepare for, and respond to the coronavirus. Number eight, recommend approval of a new series nine liquor store no. liquor license for target number 2400. Number nine, recommend approval of a new series 12 restaurant liquor license for taco redemption. Number 10, recommend approval of a new series 12 restaurant liquor license for cantina at Presidio. Number 11, recommend approval of a new series 10 beer and wine liquor license for Aldi. Number 12, approve the pro tem judge appointments. Number 13, approve the council appointments to the Community Development Advisory Committee. Number 14, approve the appointments. Number 15, approve the Minor Land Division of Sparrow Goodyear. Number 16, approve Hillstone Residences at Canyon Trails Final Plat. Number 17, adopt resolution number 2020-2085, approving a development agreement for Australia Parcel 12.23 Phase 1 providing authorization and direction to take actions and execute documents necessary to carry out the intent of the resolution and development agreement and providing for an effective date. Number 18, Estrella Parcel 12.23 Phase 1 Final Plat. Number 19, adopt resolution number 2020-2084, approving a development agreement for Estrella Parcel 12.24, providing authorization and direction to take actions and execute documents necessary to carry out the intent of the resolution and development agreement and providing for an effective date. Number 20, approve Estrella Parcel 12.24 Final Plat. Well, thank you. That was a long read for you tonight. <laughs> so does anyone on the council wish to remove an item from this consent agenda? Councilman Pazillo? Mine's more of questions on just five and six. 
Could someone come forward on five and six and answer these questions? Well, I was, I was really looking for the finance director. Oh, Is he here? Oh. Is anybody here from finance? I don't believe so. Well, maybe I'd be glad finished. to take the question, though. I okay, believe you. we'll be able to answer it. Hello, Chief. I really appreciate this. First of all, I want to make sure it's recognized um, in our minutes that the school, this partnership that we have with the school for the uh, SRO officer is a 50-50 split. So they're kicking in money as well as uh, we're kicking in money, which is a great partnership. I think this is a great program. My kind of question is, I know that goes into the general fund. That's always looking for the finance director. And then it comes from us. And somehow... I don't know if there's a contra account of some kind. I don't, I'm not as familiar with government accounting as business uh, accounting, but is there a way that, you know, it can get posted into the police budget or at least footnoted in the financials so that anybody who's reading the document realize that this is a 50-50 split? That's all, that's all I'm asking. Uh, so thank you, Council Member Pazillo. Uh, it is a 50-50 grant uh, for the 10 months that school's in session. Um, however, I believe that there are separate um, orgs, as we call them, they get set in reference to where that money lies and how it comes out of there. Uh, we have to keep track of it also on our end of the police department because if it's holidays or if it's while they're out of school, then it's not obviously functioning as the 50-50 split. Okay, then maybe a footnote or something within our financial when that audit is done because I think it's important that the public realizes that this is an excellent partnership between us and the schools and you know to me I think it's great that we've reached that especially with issues that are arising out there currently uh, with the PD so the fact that the schools are working with PD and I know you built build excellent uh, networking through the schools to try to avoid any issues of happening so my hat's off to you and the school of, of arriving this. But if any way we can put on that, I think it would be greatly appreciated. And if, Mayor, if I could just add on to that. Thank yeah. you, Council Member. It does go into general fund revenues, right, but I'll work that. with a finance director to see how it might be footnoted to, uh, to reflect that agreement. That's all. Okay. Again, I appreciate the efforts on that with you and the school. I do. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Is that it? That's nope. it. Okay. What, he's got Bill? Well, Chief, while you're sitting there, it's on number seven. Okay. Um, in reading the material, um, this was uh, a grant that we received back in June, and we're being asked to approve it tonight, and it's already been accepted. Yeah, so this was a grant that came up pretty quick for us, um, and it's in reference to, obviously, the COVID-19 and the coronavirus funding that we have. So this grant is good for two years initially. So it'll, uh, it actually started back in January of 2020, and it goes to uh, January 31st of 2022. Um, it has been accepted and has been through. We had a very short window to work with to get this grant through the DOJ and to get that um, approved, I guess you would say. So in that aspect, and then with uh, council's calendar and obviously going on on the summer break and so forth, it took us a little bit to get it you know, onto the calendar, but uh, well, we knew about this in June. Yes, I believe we did. So it, it previous to you, previous to uh, Julie, the city manager, um, I've made the statement before and I'll make it again. I do not like approving things after the fact, after we've already accepted it. I just want to be back on the record for that. Uh, having not changed my position on approving things after the fact. And I, I think we had time between June 9th and the time we left on July 13th um, to to get this on our calendar. Obviously, going through it, it's not a reflection of you, Chief, and it's certainly not a reflection of the city manager. It's just, it is what it is, but um, I don't think it's a practice that we want to say, well, we got it through once, let's try it again. I want to be on the record to say we're not, I'm not comfortable doing that. Fortunately, it's for a really good cause, and it's for, quote, unquote, uh, free money, so we'll take it. But uh, I didn't want to appear inconsistent over the statements that I've made over the last 10 years. So thanks. No, du duly understood and noted. Thank you. 
Any more comments? Then can I have a motion and second to approve item one through 20? So I hear that motion. So moved. Second. A motion by Councilman Campbell and a second by Councilman Bazzillo. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Stiff? Aye. Council Member Pizzillo? Aye. Council Member Loretano? Aye. Council Member Campbell? Aye. Council Member Hampton? Aye. Council Member Kano? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. All right, there are three public hearings on the agenda, so keep me straight, guys, on the voting, all right? Just raise your hand if I miss it. So the first public hearing is an item to consider a request for a use permit for a convenience use financial institute with a drive through within the PAD of Planned Area Development Zoning District subject to stipulation. I'm opening the public hearing and Katie Wilkin, Planning Manager, will present. Katie? Thank you, Mayor, members of council. I apologize as I get situated here. As was stated, this is a request for a use permit for a financial institution. The subject property is located at Pebble Creek Marketplace, which is at the southwest corner of McDowell and Pebble Creek Parkway. It was originally zoned in 2007 and amended in 2014, and it is designated a commercial property with a PAD overlay. The PAD overlay requires a use permit for financial institutions that include a drive-through, which is why we're here tonight. It's situated on a 1.2 acre parcel, and the, um, this will facilitate the development of a SunWest Federal Credit Union site, which includes a 4,500 square foot building. Also provided was the site plan with the landscape plan, as well as the color building elevations, which meet the regulations for the PED in the center. The use permit did go through the public process. We are still currently under our alternative citizen review process with the COVID regulations and emergency declaration in place. However, um, through the citizen notification and planning and zoning commission meetings, we haven't received any inquiries regarding this case. We have found that it's compatible to surrounding uses. It meets the city's codes and regulations, and there have been no objections staff and the planning and zoning commission recommend approval subject to stipulations and that concludes my presentation i'm happy to take any Thank questions you. it says here is your applicant here with us tonight? yes i, I All apologize right. the like applicant is here He's in. he did not have a formal presentation but was happy to answer any questions or address maybe concerns. he went out to get him is that what i think that i mm -hmm. saw christopher go outside so we'll, we'll wait a moment Good evening. Good evening. I'm sorry, could you bring that closer to you and speak closer to the microphone? Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. How's that? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll start over. Jan Middlestead, Middlestead Cooper Architects. Um, I'm here to answer any questions about the project. Seems like it fits great in the neighborhood. SunWest does a great job with their projects. This is the third one we've done for them. And if anybody's got any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate your coming. No problem. Are there anybody on the line that wants to speak? I have no speaker cards or emails. Uh, no emails or comments? No. All right, I'm going to close the public hearing. Can I have a motion a second to approve the use permit for convenience use financial institute with a drive through within PID zoning district subject to stipulations? Do I hear that? Motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion from Councilman Kano and a second from Vice Mayor Stiff. Open for council discussion. Councilman. Um, Lord Tom. She was here. I looked here first. Councilman Campbell. Thank you, though. Thank you for coming. Um, am I too early in asking this? Have you worked out the entrance and the exit for this credit union? Will they be using the Circle K entrance? Are they going to use the Panera Bread entrance and to exit? Are they going to go out behind Circle K? There's actually, Circle K is to the upper portion of the screen. Right. We come in off of Pebble Creek Parkway and go quite a ways into the site before we turn into 
the north entry. And then on the south side, we can get in by Panera, but again, we're quite a ways away from Pebble Creek Parkway, so it's a safer condition. Right. It's already but, gone through site planning. But it'll be easy in and easy out, it's what I'm getting right. at, because yeah. that's gonna, be, it's gonna start getting congested. That's a very popular corner sure. right now. Everyone loves Panera and they love Circle K and right. they're gonna love your credit union. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Any other comments? Yes, Councilman Loretano. Uh, I want to thank you for, for coming. Um, this is good that you're having a drive through A lot of place banks have gotten rid of drive throughs which unfortunately now is necessary. That's so, their feeling, right? Um, I, I like the fact, and it, this is better than the one that's on mine, yeah, um, that you can is. see that it doesn't block any parking. Because I know that's a problem with some of the drive throughs that it seems to block right. as if they get too many lanes. So I appreciate the layout. So thank you very much. Of course. Any other comments? Sure. Okay. Well, welcome. Oh. Councilman Hampton, oh, sorry. No, I would say this is a, a long time coming. I've seen the credit, this credit union particularly grow and move and grow and move and grow and move. So it's been a long time coming. So I'm happy that they're able to get the larger facility. And um, I know a lot, there's lots of, they have a lot of members. That's why they're growing. So they're a good outfit. Yeah. So thank you. It's an idle spot. You can see it from I 10. You know, it, yep. we have a lot of traffic in the north and south. So I'm sure you're going to be very successful there. They're excited about it. All right. Great. All right, council, we're going to vote on this. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you very much. You the next public hearing is to consider rezoning MF-24, that's the multifamily, with a PAD, Planned Area Development Overlay, overlay for Cabana on Bullard. I'm going to open the public hearing. Planning manager, once more, Katie <laughs> Wilkin will be presenting. Katie. Thank you again, Mayor and Council. This public hearing is to consider requests to zone property from C2 to multifamily. The property is located at the northwest corner of Bullard Avenue and Van Buren Street. It's just over 10 acre property. It is designated as business and commerce by the general plan, but um, multifamily is permitted in the business and commerce land use category as long as it's located appropriately such as having direct access to arterial roadways there's also a transit oriented development overlay on the general plan and the purpose of that was to encourage higher densities and higher building intensities along van buren and mcdowell so that we could create more activity in these corridors The current zoning is PD and it allows a mix of uses. Um, the, the property is designated for general commercial, which is similar to the C2 commercial district. There was a site plan approved back in 2008, but the project didn't move further than site plan approval. And again, this request would zone the property MF24, but would propose modifying some of the development standards. Mm -hmm. The first being MF24 has a maximum density of 24 dwelling units per acre. And this proposal is for, I believe, 33 dwelling units per acre. However, it is in the transit oriented development overlay. And so it does meet the general plan um, goals and objectives to have higher densities in these areas. They have also requested reducing the parking standards. Um, after staff review, we recommended this could be done. There is a stipulation that requires they keep their site plan and the unit count the same. They have a lot of studio apartments in this um, apartment complex. And so with those stipulations, staff was comfortable with the requirement. They also did request reducing the setbacks to the arterial streets. Um, after review, this would give it a more urban feel. And again, for the Bullard Avenue corridor to make it look more like business park and more activity, um, it did seem appropriate that in this area that could work. Um, there is no um, single family residential surrounding the area. Um, so it is a unique condition than maybe other apartment complexes that we see. Um, this would facilitate the development of the cabana at Bullard. Um, property, which they did go through the rezoning process for a site near Civic Square several months ago. And if you look at the site plan, it's a similar concept where they have little pods of development. Um, and then they have a different um, 
at, like, like I said, they have more studio apartments, they have a central laundry facility um, and different unique amenities than some of the other apartments we've seen in the area. A conceptual site plan was provided and as you can see, the different pods, one pod being a pool and then other types of central amenities in the other mm -hmm. um, pods. They also provided elevations, which you can see, which are a more modern looking elevation. Again, this went through the alternative um, citizen review process. We did see, um, let me see, we did receive one email to recommending voting no on this project and that's all it said. It just simply said vote no on this site. It did not provide reasoning um, for objections. Um, it just said vote no. Other than that, we haven't received any objections to the proposal. Staff has found that the, um, it is consistent with our codes and the requests to amend our regulations are consistent with the general plan. Um, staff and Planning and Zoning Commission recommend unanimous approval. Um, that concludes my presentation and the applicant is here. Available. Thank you. Would the applicant like to speak? I think we all know Ed Bull. <laughs> He's actually provided a written comment. If oh, okay. he has? He's given us the written one. Yeah. Would you like me to just read the comment or did you want to? It's up to you. Go ahead. All I said is Ed Bull 702 Stosburn representing Greenlight. The essence of the email that I sent in is we're pleased with the recommendations from the commission and the staff. We accept the stipulations. The only new item of information I have is the person who sent the email we worked and worked to find and he eventually called me on a different case and as best I can tell he's not a neighbor he's somebody who's um, I think involved in the industrial construction business or something and and doesn't like anything other than that he of course is entitled to his opinion and I respect that and visited with him but as best I can tell, he's not a neighbor. Thank so, you very much. Thank you for your words. We request your approval. Are there any e email comments? No, Mayor. All right. I'm going to close the public hearing. Will the city clerk read, please read resolution number 2020-2083 by title only, please? Adopt resolution number 2020-2083 declaring as public records those certain documents filed with the city clerk titled official supplementary zoning map number 20-04 Cabana on Bullard legal description and Cabana on Bullard MF-24 with planned area development pad overlay development regulations May 8th 2020. Thank you. Can I have a motion a second to approve resolution 2020-2083? Do I hear that motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion by Councilman Loritano and a second by Vice Mayor Stipp. Open for council discussion. Councilman Loritano. Uh, thank you. It's a really nice project and I do like the fact that the pod system that it has, um, you, you know how we, is there any child um, like tot lots on this? Not tot lots per se, but uh -huh. there's a whole host of different Other stuff. amenities. Okay. Because you know how we feel about having those covered, so. I couldn't quite tell what those all were. My eyes are going, so. No, I think it's great. And Skyway Church owns the one next, the land next to it. Mm -hmm. Who owns that? Oh, they do? To the left of it. To the, uh, right to the, to west. the west, yes. west of it. Yeah, Skyway Church Skyway property church. is right here. They own, they own the property, but it's okay. vacant. It, the church isn't on that perch. Okay, okay, so that wouldn't be single family homes either ever. No, I believe it is zone C2 commercial. Oh, perfect. Well, I, I like it. Thank you. Next. Yes. Councilman Hampton. I can't hear what you're saying. The, Thank you. Just the exit, the, dri the driving in and out. So it's like the exit only north there, and there's a median right there that'll block someone from going left, left there. You can only go south there. Is that correct? On that northwest, northeast? Thank you. I Correct me if I'm wrong, Ed, but um, I believe the primary entrance is this one. You can see there's a median break planned. Exactly. And then okay. this secondary entrance and the one on the north are exit only. 
Correct. So to enter the property, you would use the main entrance only. Okay. But I'm you just, can exit on both. Okay. Just to get in the flow of traffic. I mean, when Skyways have in church or other things going on around the area with more traffic, just want to make sure there's plenty of space to get in and out there because it's very close to the light. But okay. And then we said there aren't any. I see some of the amenities here. I guess I didn't see the definition of all the amenities. I see, I see a pool, but there's no kids. What kind of kids areas, I guess, are there for it? Um, I see the grass, but. Mayor, may I respond? Or maybe it was directed yeah. to you. And whoever Mayor whoever Council, has the answer, yeah. <laughs> if you, I'll start with the response. There is a stipulation that requires them to provide the amenities as they depicted them to us and to the public. And those include um, an indoor fitness center, a community pool, a community barbecue area, an outdoor fitness area, a clubhouse, zen and hammock gardens, bike storage, courtyards, and outdoor paths. And they have to be in substantial conformance with the landscape plan. So it shows where those paths are and depicts the conceptual, you know, the, the amount of amenity that's provided. Okay. Yeah, those things are nice. I guess the only concern, I mean, I'm sure there'll be families in here. So I don't know if like the other development we talked about, if there needs to be a tot lot or something like that in here, but I'm sure, it, I'm sure the residents there who have kids would probably appreciate that. So. Yeah, I, I don't know, you know, I'm going to interrupt on this one. So normally when you start a, a project like that, you shop of what your customer is. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I, we never get that shared with us. And I think if sometimes we knew that, that, that you would understand that uh, a tot lot would only use if somebody had a grandchild or something like that. So is that, is that true? Yeah. The mayor councilman, if I can back up just a step. Uh, as been discussed, these buildings, pods, quadrangles, whatever you want to call them, each one of them in the interior has a themed set of amenities that's going on in the interior of each quadrangle, okay. in addition to some other amenities that are in the clubhouse and so on. Um, the, the, there is not a tot lot that's proposed here. Green light, as you're familiar with, has been in business for a number of developments here in the valley. Uh, they're very familiar with their tenant profile and what amenities get used and, and don't. And those amenities, as you know, come with not only a capital cost, but an operational cost. So they are um, tenant specific as to the type of amenities that they're looking for. Um, Katie ran through a list of them. I don't, I, we can get into my PowerPoint if you want, but we have some vignettes of different amenities that goes into the different quadrangles. But there's a wide variety of things for people to do in this development. If, if I may, Mayor, Council, to add yes. to that. Um, the staff, we know this is an important issue to Council, so staff did um, press the applicant on providing a tot lot. And um, because of the size of the units, that really is what dictates there's not many families. And because of that parking issue, we do stipulate that the maximum number of two bedroom units they can have is 60. 60. Yeah. So again, that's gonna limit the amount of those larger units because of the parking issue. And that's why staff felt comfortable bringing this forward to you without a tot lock component. Okay. Um, Laura. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, thank you. <clears throat> I think it's a really creative project. I think it's a good location for it. I think it will definitely contribute to the urban feel. Um, I'm glad you mentioned the parking issues because that is a concern. Uh, not only are the number of spaces significantly reduced, but the size of spaces. And so I was curious about the tenant profile or maybe some of the demographics that go into making that decisions because there is no on-street parking nearby should you have insufficient parking. Whichever would like to respond, go ahead, Ed. Mayor, Council Member, uh, the the bedroom mix, as I think you know from staff report, is a, 
approximately 114 studios, 162 one bedrooms, and as was mentioned, only 62 bedrooms. The, uh, the parking standards that are requested here are standards that uh, come from, actually they're Phoenix's standards that has moved toward an urban look and feel earlier than some of the other cities have gone to. And so the parking count number, the stall size number and so on is proven in the field to work. Uh, and work well for this particular type of tenant profile. It tends to be people who are working. Um, it's what Greenlight refers to as attainable housing. So it's very nice um, and it's well amenitized, um, but it's not a tenant that's going to have three cars for a studio apartment. So they're confident. In fact, uh, we have more parking provided for on the site plan than what the uh, stipulation would require as a minimum. So there is some uh, additional opportunity there if somebody is gonna have more than one car. So it's, it's a parking standard that green light is used and is used successfully uh, and is confident will work here. And I believe, don't hold me to this because it's been what a year or so city manager, but when we were here on uh, Civic Square, we were, I believe, using the same parking standard there as here, if I remember correctly. Okay. Thank you, and, and maybe this question is for you, Katie. Um, we have, because of all the deviations from the development standards for this project, are we in any way setting up a precedent that could be applied to future multifamily development? Thank you, council member. Staff's opinion is we wouldn't be setting a precedent. This is a unique site. One, there is a general plan designative of transit oriented development over it, which is why staff felt many of the deviations were justified. So if there was another development within that TOD overlay, it may be fair to make comparisons. The other unique aspect is there's not single family um, residential adjacent to this property. Um, it's separated by other properties and also the wash. So again, we felt comfortable with the deviations because there's not a single family development right next door that people might try and park in and walk over um, causing you know, concerns in a neighborhood next door. So because of those primary unique conditions, we don't believe that's setting a precedent for other multifamily developments. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, then. We're going to have a roll call. So may I have a roll call, Council? Vice Mayor Stiff? Aye. Councilmember Loretano? Aye. Councilmember Campbell? Aye. Councilmember Hampton? Aye. Councilmember Kano? Aye. Councilmember Pizzello? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. Will the City Clerk please read, read Ordinance Number 2020-1475 by title only, please? Adopt Ordinance Number 2020-1475, rezoning approximately 10.25 acres located at the northwest corner of West Van Buren Street and North Bullard Avenue from the PAD planned area development zoning district to the MF-24 multifamily zoning district with a PAD planned area development overlay. Amending the zoning map of the city of Goodyear providing for non-abridgement corrections and severability, providing for an effective date and providing for penalties. Okay, thank you. Can I have a motion second to approve ordinance number 2020-1475? Do you hear that motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion from Councilman Campbell and a second from Councilman Hampton. Open for council discussion. I'm just say something. I like to diversify. I like to diversify, and I think that is one of those communities that's going to be that. Mm -hmm. And um, if, they all, if we continue to build the same uh, ho hum for our city, it's rather boring, and it doesn't meet the na the needs of all this population is coming from California, it's coming from the Midwest, it's calling over, and so um, I think this is uh, a great interest to our community, and I, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Roll call vote. Vice Mayor Stipp? Aye. Council Member Campbell? Aye. Council Member Hampton? Aye. Council Member Kano? Aye. Council Member Pizzello? Aye. Council Member Loretano? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. All right, then on the next one you're going to read... Just a minute, I put the page over. 
So are we on the next uh, 23? Uh, adopt ordinance 2020? Did I lose my um, way? We're actually on item number on the, 23. On the page, the, the next page? Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. Would you read that, please? Um, we have to do a public hearing. So we, we already did the resolution and the ordinance for 22, so now we're on to the next item, 23. And we have to start with the public hearing. Oh, I thought that she did on both, okay. So we're at 2020, 2081? Um, yes, but she needs to do the public, we need to do the public hearing and um, Katie needs to do the presentation. Okay, we call public hearing. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. And this is a presentation for both the rezoning public hearing case and the preliminary plat case, which is okay. after the rezoning case, if it's Where okay it, with yes, the council. So this is for development known as Paseo Place. It's located at the southeast corner of Yuma Road and 183rd Avenue. Um, and catty corner from it, this was formerly known as Paseo Place Parcel 2. Um, there is another Paseo Place Parcel 1, which is located catty corner, um, but that's going to be combined with the La Pravada development and known as La Pravada. So this will now just be known as Paseo Place, which is nice because it was confusing with the two different Paseo Places. This development is approximately 80 acres and it's currently zoned R16 with a PED overlay, which um, allowed for the development of 60 foot wide lots. The request is to rezone this to R14 and remove the PAD overlay. In the city zoning ordinance, um, and I should say they're doing the reduced R14, which allows you to do a slightly smaller lot width and a slightly smaller um, side yard setback. And according to the zoning ordinance, in order to justify the zoning, you have to provide for two amenity elements, four connectivity elements, and four streetscape elements. So I'm gonna go through how they're demonstrating compliance with those elements. For amenities, there's two required. They are providing a full-size basketball court and pickleball courts, which will be lit. Um, we do require some you know, field amenities, but we do not require lighting them, and they're providing um, more than the minimum required. For the connectivity, we do consider this an infill development because it is in an area where there's already infrastructure, planned infrastructure and surfaces. Um, they are providing trail system connections to a publicly um, accessible trail, so it's not only limited to the HOA, um, as well as the Maricopa Trail runs along Yuma Road. Um, for lot diversity, at least 30% of the lots are going to be 50 feet wide. So again, under the R14 reduce, they can go to 40 feet. Mm -hmm. At a minimum, they get a point if they go up to five feet, but they went ahead and went 10 feet additional. So there will be a, a mix of lots of 40 foot and 50 foot wide lots. Right. Also, they've designed it with no subdivision perimeter wall. So that has a more open feel and there's more connectivity to the adjacent trails. Finally, for the streetscape, and I'm sorry, I'm pulling some of my notes. There's four required. They will be providing detached sidewalks, so there'll be a landscape area between the street and the sidewalk. Um, they will be using alternative paving materials, so some kind of paver at the entrances, so it has a sense of place and entry. Um, they will be doing decorative street lights, which they will be owning and maintaining. Um, and they will um, be incorporating the West Goodyear theming, which was basically set by Las Brisas. Again, because of this area isn't one master plan community, staff's been working through with all the communities to try and create a larger sense of place and theming for West Goodyear. So we've requested that um, these developments adopt the Las Brisas theming with the little white picket fence and some of the colors so that, again, there's a more cohesive master plan community feel to the area. And that little picture is a snippet of um, one of the large shaded covered areas that's in Las Brisas that they will be providing at this location as well. Again, the site is 80 acres and they will be proposing the development of 295 lots and 22 tracks. 
Um, the preliminary plat does provide the elements that the zoning case required them to provide. Um, and again, we did noticing per the alternative citizen review notices. Um, the applicant did host a virtual neighborhood meeting. However, nobody from the public did attend the meeting and we haven't received any feedback. Staff has found that the um, proposal, both the rezone and the preliminary plot proposals meet all the city's codes and ordinances. We haven't received any concerns from the public and both staff and the Planning Zoning Commission have recommended approval of both cases. That concludes my presentation and I'd be Thank happy you. to answer any questions. All right, let's vote on this. Can I have a motion a second to approve ordinance number 2020-1474? I need a motion on that. Uh, Mayor, sorry, that was, you're in the middle of a open, yeah. Boy, I'm really back to my old ways, aren't I? I'm sorry, <laughs> what? Um, and, we, and the applicants here too, I, um, but he did send comments and I can read those or? Oh, you, I'm sorry, do you have any comments? Is anybody? I, I don't have any email comments besides the one from the applicant. Yeah, and we don't have any on there about comments on this. Yeah, just the applicant's comments. Oh. <clears throat> And Mr. Bull is here if there's any questions, yeah. I believe. Yeah, bring, bring the applicant up, that's fine, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ed, I, Consul, Mr. Ed Bull, Lewis. I apologize. <laughs> oh, you were on a roll. I don't want to slow down the train if it's moving <laughs> in the right direction. Um, if you all are ready to make a motion for approval, I'm ready to be quiet. If you need something more from me, I'll be happy to make I think a presentation. We are. Does everybody around this table feel that way? All right, let's have a motion, please, and a second. Motion. Mayor, I just need you to close the yeah, public close hearing the then. Hearing. Am I? See, I'm lost again. I'm closing this? Yeah. yeah. All right. Now what do I do? Now, now I have to read the, um, the resolution. Okay, go ahead. Adopt resolution number 2020-2081, declaring as public records those certain documents filed with the city clerk titled legal description for Paseo Place Parcel 2 and supplementary zoning map number 20-02 and Paseo Place Parcel 2 conceptual landscape plan dated July 15th, 2020. Thank you. Can I have a motion a second to approve ordinance number 2020-1474 by? So moved. Second. I've heard a motion by Stiff. The second was? Councilman Fazillo, open for council discussion. Yes, Councilman Hampton. I, I think it's a good project. I like the openness to it. I had a question. Is the 181st, that's still a dirt dirt road, correct? It's 181st. It's 181st Street there. I think it's still dirt. I don't know if anybody, Katie, probably has the answer to that. 181st right here, the one that's on the east the east border of the property we have someone who's going to answer that go ahead i noticed there's no roads or no walls for the perimeter i'm never walls in the neighborhood and the actual houses themselves but i'm just curious how the feel is going to be if if i'm using that path along there so i think it's a farm road right next to it and the it looks like county island to the east of that yes, yes. Thank you, Mayor Council Member. Yeah, this property is county property. Um, there may be a dirt road there, and I apologize, I don't know, but there's no access to it from this development because yeah. it is for the county residential, and it that road is under county maintenance. Yeah, I didn't think it was paved. It didn't look like it here. Mm -hmm. I was just clarifying to myself if I was in that neighborhood what that would look like or feel like. So, Seems to me you had people questioning that a long time ago. Well, it reminds me of when we were plan when they were planning all these uh, pockets there so. that one neighborhood over by las Brisas where they didn't like access yeah, yeah. they didn't want people same thing yeah kids coming into their neighborhoods mm -hmm. and there was that, there was that gate animals. they didn't want them yeah they didn't want that gate there and they wanted mm -hmm. it closed off right. so but he, we didn't receive any negative comments it sounds like from the public so i i like the feel of it being open especially if the neighbors are completely i mean there's only a few neighborhoods neighbors there anyway and they're not even near the canal either so okay yeah I was just curious I was just trying to get a better feel for it but I like I like the overall uh, feel of the neighborhood so no real questions just just 
wanted to clarify on the road there. It's turning into a nice area over there, I think. Lolly? Well, that happens to be an uh, area that I'm very fond of. We have worked on this for the nine or 11 years I've been on council. We've been talking about that area. And it's great to see that it's developing and it does have a wonderful urban feel mm -hmm. out there. And it's, I love it that they're not gonna have any perimeter walls, that they're gonna be open from one development to another. And we have different developers developing homes that are somewhat similar, but not really. And it's really very nice. So thank you. And thank you, Mr. Bull for coming tonight. You're very welcome. We and so out of curiosity, is this the 16 group that came a long time ago? I can't yeah. remember the number. So it's been on since uh, 2005. Yeah, we had no water. Uh -huh. part of, and part so of I'm actually thrilled to see that it's uh, maturing and, and people are building in it and we're yeah. having good communities. And I agree with Wally. I like the <laughs> versatility of the different developers and builders. I think that's healthy. Mm -hmm. um, but also I've talked with several people where people are very happy uh, that have bought houses in any of those areas. So uh, doing a good job. So thank you. So something mayor and others that's going on here that kind of weaves in among some of the questions or comments is all along that eastern perimeter as you can see is uh, is open space in the sense of there's a channel and a walkway along there mm -hmm. but it is permanently separating these homes from the county homes mm -hmm. to the east and yet it gives you that country we think feel. is a good Wonderful. thing yeah mm -hmm. that's great any other comments all right roll call vote please Vice Mayor Stiff? Aye. Councilmember Hampton? Aye. Councilmember Kano? Aye. Councilmember Pizzello? Aye. Councilmember Loretano? Aye. Councilmember Campbell? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. Thank you so much. Let's go to the business. I'd like um, to remind actually, Council. Actually, Mayor, we have the ordinance. Oh, I, am oh, just, I am so behind in this. <laughs> you should have come over and showed me the way. Right <laughs> I needed it tonight. All right, so we're on page seven um, at the top. Yes. Okay, that I figured out. All right. So you're ready to read the ordinance? I am. All right. Adopt ordinance number 2020-1474, conditionally rezoning approximately 80 acres of property located at the southeast corner of Yuma Road and the 183rd Avenue alignment, known as Paseo Place Parcel 2, from the R1-6 single-family residential zoning district to R1-4 single family residential, amending the zoning map of the city of Goodyear, providing for non-abridgement, providing for corrections, providing for severability, providing for an effective date and providing for penalties. Thank you. Can I have a motion and second to approve ordinance number 2020-1474? Do I hear that motion? So moved. Second. <coughs> Heard a motion from Vice Mayor and a second from Councilman Lortano. Um, council discussion? Kind of we did it ahead of time, didn't we? Roll call vote, please. <laughs> Vice Mayor Stipp? Aye. Councilmember Kano? Aye. Councilmember Pizzello? Aye. Councilmember Loretano? Aye. Councilmember Campbell? Aye. Councilmember Hampton? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. All right, now we actually are down to business. I'd like to remind council to wait for the motion a second before discussion. Our first item in business is to consider approving the preliminary plat for Paseo Place Parcel 2. Katie, you're still on, so you're welcome again. <laughs> Thank you. I don't have anything else to add to the presentation, but I'd be happy to answer any questions or provide any in other information. Said here, if Mr. Bull would like more comments, <laughs> he can certainly take this moment for that. It's been my pleasure to be here, Mayor. I wish you all well. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right. Can I have a motion a second to approve the preliminary plat for Paseo Place Parcel 2 sub relations? Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. second. I heard a motion from Councilman Campbell and a second by Bazillo. We had such a little voice. <laughs> Councilman Bazillo. Okay, open for a council discussion. Do we have a discussion? Okay. <laughs> no discussion? Okay, let's vote on. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank, Thank you. you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Bill, how are you? You all right? Okay. So let's go to the next item in the business to consider the preliminary plat for El Cedro, parcel four and five. Katie will be presenting. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. This is a preliminary plot for two parcels within the El Cedro development. The properties are located east of Cotton Lane and south of Lower Buckeye Road. The property was included in the 2014 preliminary plat, which subdi subdivided the entire parcel into single family developments. However, the south portion of the property has been purchased by Vida Communities for the development of a single family rental project. Hmm. That rezoning was approved by city council. And so now they're in to replat the area from the single family lots to facilitate the development of the single family rental project. The previous preliminary plat did include access between parcel four and five because it was a single family development. However, this new one will not include access. And so this trail just continues. The north part or the parcel doesn't have any significant changes besides that one I pointed out. Otherwise, parcel five is included as a single parcel to be developed as the multifamily development. The preliminary plat has been found to meet our required ordinances and codes and planning and zoning commission recommended approval. That concludes my presentation and I am not sure if there's an applicant on Oh, the line. he's raised his he's hand. Here. Would you like oh, to come okay. forward? Sorry, I missed that one. There we go. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, members of Council, Benjamin Tate with Withy Morris, 2525 East Arizona Biltmore Circle on behalf of the applicant. I'm delighted to be here, answer any questions you may have. Otherwise, well, we appreciate the recommendation of the of staff and the Planning and Zoning Commission. Well, we thank you for coming. Any comments, any questions for him while he's here? Okay, uh, is there any comments on, oh, all right. I said a quick question. Councilman Hampton. Is that, what is that, is that a trail between the two plots there? Is it a what kind of what kind of is that an amenity is that a no to between, between the two there this here I know you mentioned there was a, a I believe it's it a, a power line with a trail yeah. but let me see if I can I bet it is it's the uh, west I can't remember the acronym It's the Western Associ it's the WAPA um, yeah. power company so there's a okay. large set of overhead lines, but underneath it, there is a, a walking trail, a landscaped walking trail that will run from one end to the other. Okay. And then I know it's next, also next to the county island right there too. Is that dirt road that's east of it? That's not part of the property, right? Will that still remain dirt or are you guys modernizing or putting gravel or road on that eastern border of that? Or is that just a wall, a wall there? I believe it's paved. Is it going to be paved there? On Cotton Lane? No, this cotton's to the west. I'm talking to the east. I, I'm not sure the condition of the road, but yeah, I, they, I, there won't be any improved. That's a county maintained road. Okay, I was curious so where the this developer split wouldn't, you know, improve okay. that. I, so. I jog through there pretty often, and it's all it's like bumpy and, mm -hmm. and it's just dirt. So I didn't know who had control of it, if it was this property or, mm -hmm. or the county. So I was just curious what that would look like when, all, when it was all said and done. That's all. It looks like there's an entrance. From that point, anyway, so it's probably a mute point, but just curious. And then it, the southern one falls out onto Elwood right across from the KPS global type area. So, okay, I just, just in general, like I said, just I'm trying to understand the feel of the neighborhood and what it looks like to the surrounding community. So, no real questions, just clarification. So, thank you. Any other? All right, are there any comments online? All right, can I have a motion a second to approve the preliminary plat for El Cedro parcel four and five? Do I hear that motion? So moved. Second. second. All right, I hear a motion from Vice Mayor Stiff and a second from Councilman Kanan, was it? All right, so let's vote on all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you for keeping your city moving in unprecedented times. Oh, thank you, we love doing it. All right, number 26, next item on business to consider approving a preliminary plat for Cotton Flower Marketplace lots 1A-4 and 6-9. Katie Wilkins presenting. Thank you once again. This preliminary plat is proposed at Cotton Flower Marketplace, which is located southeast of Cotton Lane and Yuma Road. 
it is an already existing shopping center. Um, they wish to just subdivide the property so that they can um, have different ownership of the various different lots. There were previously um, minor land divisions processed on the property, which are an administrative level approval. However, there's a limit to how many minor land divisions you can do on a property before you trigger the full preliminary plat, final plat subdivision process. This prelim preliminary plat doesn't include the whole center's boundaries. Two of the original parcels are not included, as you can see outlined by this um, figure here. However, that remaining portion will be subdivided into nine lots. This preliminary plat was found to um, be consistent with all of our codes and ordinances, which includes our new commercial lot sizes that council approved several <laughs> months ago. Um, there have been no inquiries on this project from the public and um, both staff and planning and zoning commission recommend approval. Good, thank you. Are there any email comments? No, Mayor. All right, can I have a motion and second to approve the preliminary plat for Cotton Flower Marketplace, <clears throat> excuse me, lots 1A-4 and 6-9, subdividing approximately 10.27 acres into eight lots subject to stip stipulation. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. I, I heard a motion from Councilman Hampton and I heard a second from Councilman Frizzillo. Open for council discussion. I think we've had it all, haven't we? So let's vote on all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you, Katie. Number 27, the next business item is to consider amending chapter 16 of the Goodyear City Code. And Katie's going to once more present to us. Katie? You know, I says Katie down here, so. If you want it. You, you look trying to get out. You're looking different now, Katie. I'm sorry they didn't have your name on, so. Steve Sinto, Deputy Director of Engineering. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm, I'm happy to be here this evening. I'm seeking approval of an amendment to Chapter 16 of the City Code for flood damage prevention. Some quick background. Goodyear is a participant in the National Flood Insurance Program, or NFIP. Uh, the NFIP is a program administered by FEMA that provides subsidized flood insurance premiums for property owners within participating communities. Uh, this year, earlier this year, FEMA made some changes to the NFIP that require the city to update our flood damage prevention ordinance mm -hmm. in order to keep our current status within the program. Uh, the updates are administrative in nature and consist of revisions to the definitions and terminology, the removal of several obsolete sections, and the addition of a section addressing Goodyear's statutory authority as floodplain manager. All proposed changes were cross-checked with the applicable engineering standards and building codes, and no updates to those documents were required. This concludes my presentation, and I'm now I'm available for any questions. Thank you very much. Are there any comments on the emails? No, Mayor. All right, will the city clerk please read resolution number 2020-2992 by title only, please? Adopt resolution number 2020-2092, declaring as public record that certain document filed with the city clerk entitled Amendment to Chapter 16 of the Goodyear City Code. Thank you. Can I have a motion a second to approve resolution 2020-2092? Did I hear that motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion from Councilman Kano. I didn't hear and a second from Councilman Hampton. Open for council discussion. Councilman Sip. Completely Councilman unre Sip. unrelated to the subject, Steve, I wanted to congratulate you on your promotion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. Any other discussion? All right, roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Stipp? Aye. Council Member Pizzello? Aye. Council Member Loritano? Aye. Council Member Campbell? Aye. Council Member Hampton? Aye. Council Member Kano? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. Thank you. Will the city clerk please read ordinance number 2020 1478 by title only? 
Adopt ordinance number 2020-1478, amending chapter 16 of the Goodyear City Code, providing for corrections, providing for severability and penalties, declaring an emergency and providing an effective date. Thank you. Can I have a motion and second to approve ordinance number 2020-1478? Do I hear that motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion from Councilman Campbell and a second from Councilman Hampton. Open for council discussion. Oh, it was you. You yeah. see, I can't, I can't tell when I'm reading. So just wave me we down. We all have tiny voices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you don't have a tiny voice. <laughs> I have a tiny ear. <laughs> okay, so the second. With the motion or the second? I had the second. Okay. <clears throat> Councilman Vice Mayor Stiff had the second. Open for council discussion. All right. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Stiff? Aye. Council Member Loretano? Aye. Council Member Campbell? Aye. Council Member Hampton? Aye. Council Member Kano? Aye. Council Member Pizzillo? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. All right. The last item in business is to consider approving an agreement from the judicial services with the town of Guadalupe. Court Administrator? Crystal Whalen will present. Crystal? Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you. Welcome back from your break. Uh, we've missed you. I'm sure it looks a little different here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so this evening I'm presenting on behalf of the court and recommendation of an intergovernmental agreement between the town of Guadalupe and the city of Goodyear. This uh, unique agreement would allow the city of Goodyear Municipal Court to accept jurisdiction of a limited number of post adjudicated cases filed prior to July 1st of 2020. Um, to tell you how we got here in May of this year, the Maricopa County Superior Court Office of the Presiding Judge contacted Judge Galindo and I uh, to explain that due to the unanticipated effects of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, the Town of Guadalupe Municipal, would, Municipal Court would cease its operations affected June 30th of this year. Uh, Guadalupe and Goodyear being part of the integrated judicial branch of the state of Arizona, we operate on the same financial and case management systems. And so Superior Court made the inquiry with our court if we had the ability to take on this limited number of cases, which are again in post adjudicated delinquent status. Um, the judge and I evaluated the request and determined that these case would, cases would require processing in an administrative nature only. The cases are already set up on a statewide automated payment processing system. Uh, it's a statewide program uh, run by the Administrative Office of the Courts. We are already trained and capable of using the database coming from the Guadalupe Municipal Court. And we estimate that it will take Goodyear court staff no more than one hour per day, and this is a high estimation, to process anything administrative related to these cases. This includes doing the financial deposit to finance each day as well. So while the court is currently experiencing longer courtroom dockets due to our need to socially distance and set capacity thresholds, these cases are processed in an entirely different manner and will not have any negative impacts on our current operations or our processing times. Um, the following potential benefits were evaluated in addition to uh, looking at this proposed agreement. The Goodyear Court staff will utilize the Administrative Office of the Courts database created for Guadalupe, which we are fully trained in, and therefore we have the ability, because the database is separate, we just change the login we have the ability to fully track all case processing and financial activity with no mixture between Goodyear and Guadalupe. So this affords for accurate data tracking. There are no initial costs to the setup of this agreement or to bring on the agreement because all the equipment exists. There's only the estimated staff processing time that I just uh, went over. Goodyear will receive an initial payment of $23,000 in court enhancement funding and we will retain all future revenue, which includes additional court enhancement funding, which is used to fund our court security position and um, unanticipated technology needs. We will receive all municipal gap, uh, fill the gap funding, I'm sorry, which we use to fund staff currently. Judicial collection enhancement funding, which we use to fund staff currently. All future fare, this is the program where these automated payments are being receded from automatically. 
so we'll receive all future quarterly disbursements. This funding is used, Goodyear Municipal Court is currently the pilot court for a program called Online Dispute Resolution, which is funded through the FAIR program, and also Zoom, which we are using, in addition to um, any other general fund revenues that come in. The FAIR program also gets deposited as a general fund revenue to the city of Goodyear. Um, this agreement has an initial term of three years and will be reviewed to ensure that the agreement does not create a burden on Goodyear taxpayers for the costs associated with these judicial services. Additionally, the data will be detailed specifically in the court's annual presentation to council to keep you apprised uh, regarding the progression of the agreement. Additionally, new data that was not in the car, we just, the judge and I have been reviewing um, case filings and Goodyear has most recently evaluated our downward trend because of COVID. Our case filings in Goodyear are down about 61%. To, so to kind of compare, um, this is 610 cases that don't have to come into court that we are um, looking to accept. And Goodyear court, we're ranked 13th out of about 82 municipal courts where we generally see 10, 12, 13,000 charges a year. So this 610 is very minimal, but will make up hoping for some of these lost revenue sources because our caseload um, was 378 last month alone. So it's, it's dropped substantially because of the impacts of COVID, um, which, is, which is nationwide. It's not just Goodyear. Um, so with that, Judge Galindo and I are both here to answer all of council's questions regarding this proposed agreement. I, we do have Karen Westover, who is the regional director of Maricopa County Superior Court um, on the phone. And for these reasons, the judge and I respectfully re recommend that mayor and council adopt the resolution for this intergovernmental agreement. Thank, Thank you, Crystal. That was a good presentation. Very Thank detailed. You. you covered everything. Thank you, Mayor. I think for some of us that are not familiar with the program, uh, that was well done. Can I have a motion a second to approve resolution number 2020-2080? Do I hear that motion? So moved. Second. Okay. I heard a motion from Councilman Laura Tano, a second by Councilman Vazillo. Open for council discussion. Excuse Councilman me, Mayor. 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 I have to read it into the record. Oh. Okay. But I think we can. Are there any comments? Yes, I'm okay. sorry. So adopt resolution 2020-2080, authorizing the mayor to execute an intergovernmental agreement with the town of Guadalupe for judicial services for cases filed prior to July 1st, 2020. Thank you very much. All right. Now, can I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 2020 by that? Was that Councilman Loretano and Councilman, second by Councilman Hampton? All right, Council, you're on. Discussion? Councilman Zillow. As I appreciate your can do attitude, <clears throat> Crystal, picking up some things, and I, my understanding, you're not the only court that can do this, but they've asked you to, to do this. I do have some concerns, though. Um, you have about 11 authorized positions. And if we count the judge, we count you, and we count the person out front on security, that's eight support staff. If I remove the person who retired in February, roughly about a, about a year, we've had 10 physicians turn over in your department, which is greater than 100%. That concerns me because that's lack of institutional knowledge. You take on new stuff, I guess with the pandemic, Part of the issue is, is your cases are down, so maybe that helps a little bit, but really I'm concerned about the turnover rate. Any comments? Absolutely, thank you, Council Member Pazillo, for that question. Um, Judge Galindo and I ourselves have reached out to Human Resources to dig a little deeper into our turnover. We'd like to understand uh, a little more about um, that high turnover rate um, that issue aside, we're very confident that this intergovernmental agreement would not negatively impact even at our reduced uh, capacity. And I can allow Judge Galindo to elaborate further as our head of HR as to some insight into the turnover. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having us. I know we're your last item, so we will be brief. The courts specifically nationwide have been dramatically affected 
by COVID-19 and the very broad application of the CARES Act. And so in having received the information that you requested, Councilman Pizzillo, there, it brought, of course, the, to light the people that had turned over and et cetera. So what, what you'd like to do, and we welcome the opportunity for all of you to discuss specifically why we've had that turnover rate when we have the information from HR regarding the determination and the labeling of each person that has left. The administrative portion that will be handled for the city of Guadalupe will not impact us in our ability to continue providing this core service to, our, to your constituents. That will not be an issue at all. And we will dig deeper because we need to determine, aside from the forms used by HR, how these determinations and classifications are made. And then once we do have that, along with the Human Resources Department Director and each of the personnel files involved, we would welcome discussing those with you in an appropriate forum. Thank you. Council Channel. I, I want to thank both of you for, as Council Member Pasillo said, the can-do attitude to go out and, you know, try to help out. And also helping out another court for whatever reason, it sounds like they will be shut down or they will not be proceeding. Um, I, I, my concern, obviously, is not really with this program per se, because right now you're at a low capacity. But from what I'm hearing, rumors that you're not the only court. And we're not the only one that has a backlog of cases not charged but it doesn't mean those are not going to be charged. Um, knowing that we have this time now to get people up to speed, do we have a plan when, I hate to say the floodgates open, because I've heard five to 7,000 at the county possibly. Um, so do, what's our floodgate plan? I, I'd actually, thank you for that question, Councilmember Lawrence. I actually love to answer. We have been very fortunate in our approach. I. It's as fancy as me keeping um, a legal sheet, and I, count, I, I structure every single docket. We, we did this from the very beginning. We are actually, because we go all day, um, Monday through Thursday and some Fridays, and we also have our pretrial conferences happening from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. twice a week. We have kept everything moving. Pretrial conferences, which are um, meetings between the defendant and the prosecutor, used to happen in tandem to court. So now they work a different scheduled prosecutor's office so they can get actually those held before and it didn't impact the docket. It worked out very well. They, they're doing them telephonically. They're knocking a bunch out in the morning. So we... Uh, we stayed essential. We kept moving. We switched really quickly to remote appearances. So we're really only setting out to mid-September at this point because we have been so aggressive in keeping moving and training staff. I've clerked with Judge Galindo myself on dates. Like we have, we have been very fortunate to be quick on our toes and our staff are very adaptable. We, so we are not in danger of no. being backlogged because so we, when that cut, when they come for charging, you guys are set. Yes. We were actually, if I may, very strategic in how we scheduled these matters so that we would make sure that we would continue providing the service in spite of the backlog. There are a number of courts that have been unable to do so, but with that trustee legal pad and daily concerts, really fancy. <laughs> And there's a continuance, we plop somebody in there. I have had to work in the electrical room, doing orders of protection, working in our conference room where you have your executive session, but nothing stops us because we know that it is very important for us to continue working as we are so that we are not opening those floodgates so we can make sure that we provide these core services to every single person here in Goodyear. So we're very proud of that yeah. as well. If, if you'd like, I'm, Ms. 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 Westover is also available regarding why they reached out to Goodyear Municipal Court for our assistance. If you're still there, Ms. Westover. You may have I am. Oh. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes. Um, well, we reached out to Goodyear for um, a couple of reasons. Um, the first um, and most important reason was um, our confidence in both Judge Galindo and in Crystal in being able to handle um, the um, post-adjudicated cases um, and, and knowing that they could um, handle them the way um, 
we would handle them if Superior Court had jurisdiction to handle them. And so we had great, great confidence in their abilities and um, their reputation. Um, the next um, factor was mentioned by Crystal, which was um, we needed a um, Aztec court, um, not just um, somebody that had a different case management system. We did reach out to Tempe, um, and they took all of the cases going forward um, because they're, they didn't have to be in the same case management system. Um, but we needed somebody with the same case management. So those were the two reasons that we reached out to um, Goodyear. Thank you. Well, thank you. I just want to say that that if you find the floodgates, please let Julie let us know so we can see if that's a problem because I think this is going to be a problem. I think you guys have a handle on it, but just in case, just keep us up to date. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Absolutely. Is Councilman Hampton? No, I, I think this is a good idea to help Town of Guadalupe. I just had a question on the financial, too. So it looks like we'll be covered along the way, but we can only use dollars from them for security and technology. And our can will there be a point where we no, can't you can use, use those dollars for any purpose for anything, any purpose, any purpose. Okay, I just looked in here and the in the fiscal impact is talking about restricted revenues equal to the cost we receive intends to use those funds for additional technology and security. But I was just curious if that we're not restricted to only use it for those. We can use it for anything. The court enhance. Thank you for the question. The court enhancement fee, by definition, by ordinance, stipulates that, but the intergovernmental agreement allows us to use it for any costs associated with the case processing. So they put that uh, language in the agreement. I may have misworded it in the car, but it is in the actual IGA. Okay. Okay. So we think we'll be equal. We'll be all things equal. We won't be a shortfall, or we won't be able to use money for for actually doing the cases and things like that. Yes, so, okay. especially with the um, fair revenues and the fill the gap and the judicial collection enhancement fund. Yeah, I see those too. Okay, I was just curious. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor? I think I had the same, had the same question, so I just want to be perfectly clear. In the car, and I think you indicated you may have not nailed it correctly, but and that's okay. Um, the car says that um, the funds cannot be used for general fund expenditures. Some, I'm not, I'm not quoting it exactly, but basically the money comes into the judicial fund and then, it, but it cannot be used. It's not general fund money. Vice Mayor, yes, thank you. So the, and it comes in as court enhancement, municipal fill the gap, and judicial collection enhancement with our, which are generally court restricted funds, but the agreement allows the court to use to recoup the costs, any costs associated. And in our evaluation as well, um, we saw this as an opportunity to bring in that initial funding source, because when I'm forecasting and looking at what's happening with case filings, that revenue source is accounted for current positions. And so it, in the calculations, it seems to wash out in the end, if that's probably not the proper term. But, but it, it does. And, and I think that was, that's the point of clarification I wanted to make because the car made it appear as though we were going to have an expenditure, a general fund expenditure of 30000 we were and we were going to receive a virtually equivalent amount, but in these restricted funds, which general fund money is taxpayer money, restricted funds is court money, so I wanted to make sure that we weren't putting the burden on the taxpayer. And what it sounds like, the agreement is not doing that. Correct. The agreement does allow us to expend those funds, and we don't have to go through any special approval process. It's just like when we use Goodyear's court enhancement, that's authorized by council's authority, and we just have to work with budget to fill um, to properly budget our um, account to expend them. Julie, nice. would you like to Thank comment? You. If I, if I could add, I think that it may be splitting hairs, but I think it is important um, that it is very clear that the money, it does not come into the general fund. The money is going into court-restricted funds. However, you're then able to use your court-restricted funds however you see fit. But I do want to make sure that the 
car, um, you know, was worked on very carefully with the uh, city's budget team to make sure that it is accurate and that the funds are not coming into the count to the city's general fund. Thank you, Julie. And that's why I added the information that when I, it's not in the car, but when I um, presented to you that we would be including this in our annual court presentation to keep you updated to assure you that we are monitoring um, the use of Goodyear resources and how it applies to processing these cases. Thank you. Thank you. Any other Councilman Hay? So just for clarification, you'll have that 610 or so cases and then once they're through, then you're done. Exactly, thank you. It was 610 as of the end of June, so we're hoping it's maybe dwindled down a little more if, if um, folks have been more compliant, so. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Any other comments? I think it uh, says something about Goodyear. Uh, it says that they care about our state and care about surrounding cities. And we hear all the time about the surrounding cities and the difficulty they're having and we're so fortunate and so many of them their budgets are so small and there's no with the tourism being taken away from them it's just a struggle so thank you for being so astute and articulate on this and bringing it forth and i agree we always have to as my husband used to say as a pilot you got to check six so you got to always remember that you're going to be okay um, and you have an alternate plan, but uh, good on you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we're done. I go to a roll call. On your note, I know I, my council's so nervous. I've made a few little mistakes this evening, <laughs> but that's not that's usual for me. So I'm not going to say it's not. It's unusual. So let's do a roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Stiff. Aye. Council Member Campbell. Aye. Council Member Hampton. Aye. Council Member Kano. Aye. Council Member Pizzillo. Aye. Council Member Loritano. Aye. Mayor Lord. Aye. The motion carries. Okay. Information items, anything the council wants to give? But I'm sure you are, Ali. I looked at that list. You've been busy. Oh, yeah, I have been very busy, but I'd like to take a moment, if I may, and I, I want to take this opportunity to thank the mayor and council, our city manager, the department, the different departments in the city of Goodyear, the Goodyear Fire Department, Maricopa Ambulance, Goodyear Police Department, Goodyear Human Resources, Mayor and Council of Buckeye, Avondale, Surprise, El Mirage, Glendale, Litchfield Park, and Peoria, as well as the National League of Cities, the Women in Municipal Government, Skyway Church, Palm Valley Church, Desert Springs Community Church, Pebble Creek Homeowners Association, the Pebble Creek Pickleball Club, Pebble Creek Care Bears, Arizona Patriot Guard, Luke Air Force Base Honor Guard, Assistance and Health Care Board for Cancer Treatment Centers of America, All Faith Community Services Leadership West, and the many, many residents and friends who showered my family and I with love, phone calls, kindness, support, flowers, cards, text messages, meals that were provided, picking up the family at the airport, and the lovely hand-painted rocks each day at our door. Words cannot express how deeply we appreciate all of your kindness during our time of need and sorrow with the passing of my husband, John. So nice. It's the community coming together, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, it makes you sit back and think um, of what a quality value we have in the community that we live in. The people come to the door and come to the, they come to help your spirit, and it certainly takes that. So I think all of us were glad to do what little we could do, and you know we're still here. And having gone through the same thing, and still within that time frame, uh, I can understand where you are. And um, again, we all offer anything we can do to help. We're here, okay? And thank you for noting that. Okay, city manager. Don't have anything special, just want to say welcome back from break. It's great to see all of you. Yeah, it is. I really appreciate it. So the next meeting will be a regular meeting on August 31st, 2020 at 6 p.m. No further business. This meeting's adjourned.